The following is a presentation of the Chicago Bears Network and ChicagoBears.com. Download the Chicago Bears official mobile app for up-to-the-minute Bears content every day. And now, welcome to Bears All Access, your all-access pass into Chicago Bears football. Bears All Access is brought to you by IGS Energy and sponsored by Athletico Physical Therapy and CDW. Week two at training camp, kicking into gear with the pads coming on, the evaluations starting to really make an impact. Welcome back, everybody, to another edition of Bears All Access here on Chicago Sports Radio 670. The score we're brought to you by IGS Energy with Tom Thayer, the Super Bowl Bear. I'm Jeff Joniak from News Radio 780 and 105.9 FM WBBM. We're really digging in now, buddy. Week two, uh, today's practice, non pad, but in the next three days, padded practices, Tom. And Matt Nagy promising earlier this morning that there will be some live portions of it. There won't be a ton, but that's something we always get excited about, and that's about the running game. Yeah, you know, it is. You know, that's one thing David Montgomery and the rest of the running backs want to see. They want to see how things unfold according to their offensive line in front of them and then how they read the defense reacting to the plays they're running. Again, Matt started this early by saying that he wants to get 20 carries a game, and so I think you have to emphasize the running game a little bit more. And it's also the physical element that's added to that part of practice. I think it's really beneficial for both sides. Some of the COVID-19 conversation you may have heard uh, involving the reserve list with Eddie Goldman, Christian Jones, Patrick Scales, and Elijah Wilkins here and there in the last couple of days. Not a lot of discussion about it really from day to day according to Matt Nagy and not like last year when they would have to shut the building down and, and scramble at three o'clock in the morning. It's not something you overreact to and uh, we don't know all the details. We're not going to know all the details. There are NFL rules regarding that as he indicated this morning, but here is where head coach Matt Nagy is at. This year, Zero panic. I mean, when stuff like this happens, we learn from that. And I think uh, it's our job as leaders to make sure that the players feel that and know that. It is what it is. I mean, we're going to educate and encourage all these players to do everything the right way and what we feel can help us and help them as, as people. But at the same time, you're not going to get any panic from me. And you're not going to get away from it all at all either, Tom. It's going to be a constant conversation throughout the league. NFLPA weighed in yesterday, sent memos to players about it. They're a little bit concerned. There have been some flare-ups in the league in Atlanta and Miami, Washington, Minnesota. Uh, but by and large, it's not just the players, though. Like last year, he's got to educate the families as well. And so they're taking calls. They're doing whatever they can do. And every player uh, is trying to adjust to it all. Well, you know, that's kind of one of the elements that present itself in a team sport like football. Because it's not only the pandemic issues that you're going to face now from last year to this year, but it's also the immediacy of an injury on a football team that all of a sudden you're looking for someone to fill that void. So I think when you listen to Matt Nagy answer that question, you're listening to a voice of experience. Now he's got a couple years at the helm of the quarter at the head coaching position, and he realizes you can't. Can't panic in any of the scenarios. Like tackle right now. Tevin Jenkins has not practiced just yet. Still working through back tightness. Uh, the list is long. There were a lot of players out today. Obviously, Tariq Cohen, Eddie Jackson, Jermaine Fetty still not able to get on the practice field. But a whole bunch of other guys, including Elijah Wilkinson, including Badara Terror, who's also one of the tackles. So it's giving a great opportunity, Tom, to Larry Borum. Yeah, well, he's been doing good things this whole camp, and, and uh, he has a, a really positive attitude. Uh, he's extremely focused. He, he fits in well with the guys, uh, and, and he's coachable. So um, I was not surprised with, with him uh, knowing that, okay, hey, listen, we just found out. You got to go in there now. You're going to play this, this practice here at left tackle with the ones and, and do your thing. It wasn't, it wasn't big to him. He was not overwhelmed. The film proves it. He did a great job. Uh, and and But can you do a great job today? You know, the one thing about Larry Borum, I, the early indicator of Larry Borum is how he showed up at camp. He was in shape. He completely reconstructed his body from the 360 pounds he played at in college. And now he's more of a fluid 335-pounder. Very strong. Good feet. Good recognition of his assignment. So, to me, I couldn't be more excited about any other player on this team than Larry Borum. And right now, he looks the part. He really does. And we saw that early uh, in the rookie minicamps with no pads, just walking around and running around out there and seeing him do drills. How he works against Khalil Mack. 
Tom, that's a great test right there. You're right. You want to talk about something not being too big for him. It's the one-on-one in full pad opportunities to go against a guy like Khalil Mack. And he held his ground. He was strong at the point of attack. He gave a nice punch back to Khalil Mack. So, again, all indicators are that this job is not too big for Larry Borum. And it's going to make Tevin, when he does come back, get in that competitive frame of mind and try to earn his spot somewhere on the offensive line. Three inside linebackers uh, out this morning. Joel E.A. Booneyway, also Josh Woods. They came down with some flare-ups from the practice at Soldier Field. And then Kristen Jones uh, out today as well. So newbie, Alec Ogletree wearing number 44, 12 career interceptions, four for touchdowns, and a swipe of Nick Foles at practice this morning. He took it to the house. Hey, this guy's a legitimate starting NFL linebacker. He's not going to be a guy that you're going to have to introduce the nuances of the opponent's offense. He's seen it all. He's got a lot of playing time under his belt, and he's a guy that could come in here and immediately contribute to the depth, but also – become a starter coming up on today's show we've got darnell mooney for a couple of segments the second year bears wide receiver out of tulane and then we'll be joined by jimbo covert going into the hall of fame on saturday in that centennial class of 2020 nice long conversation coming up with jimbo a lot to discuss this is bears all access on chicago sports radio 670 the score The Chicago Bears, one of the teams in the Chicago Sports Alliance, are supporting Ready Chicago's gun violence reduction efforts. Learn more at heartlandalliance.org slash ready. Jeff Joniak, Tom Thayer, back with you on Bears All Access. Pleased to be joined and pleased to finally meet him in person, second-year wide receiver Darnell Mooney. Thanks for taking some time and joining us. How you feeling? Everything going well? Feeling good. How about yourself? Yeah, you know, great. And uh, we watched you this morning at practice make a great play and catch in the end zone. And the man went gymnastics on us. I mean, the summer, the, the backflip was just perfection. I'd give it a 10.0. Uh, you know, that just, is this something that you do in practice? Nah, uh, I mean, it just, it just came upon you. I was just trying to show a little personality and uh, show some different things that I can do. You know, I'm a man with uh, a lot of different tricks. So, <laughs> Well, the one thing, that's the gift of having great athleticism and harving, harvesting all that because... You, you've shown it. You've made some acrobatic catches. We've seen your college tape as well back there. But you're making a name for yourself in a, in a real short time. I always, I always like to say some guys, they go from 0 to 60 or they, make, they, they just make a big impact in a very short time. And, and it's never a straight line. And I think you've already done that and a lot more uh, room to grow. And I, we know, I no longer want to call you a fifth-round pick because it doesn't matter, right? <laughs> for sure. It doesn't matter at all. And, and you kind of intimated that when you met the media this year for the first time, that you want to you wanna make some noise. Sure. Go deeper into that. Tell us about all that. So uh, main thing is when I was saying that uh, I want to want my name to be known is more so of like uh, getting respect from uh, around the lead and then not even just some respect around the lead but in the locker room as well. So like with the quarterback, just knowing that they can come to me and uh, knowing that I'll, I'll be able to make that play regardless of whenever it is, whenever you need a, a bailout, I can be that guy. But, you know, Darnell, last year you come in, we have no expectations for you. Now this year we have a lot of expectations for you, not, not only the Bears fan, but around the NFL landscape. Was there anything different about your preparation or, you know, now that you got that attention that there are expectations thrusted on you? Um, I mean, this year, I mean, I feel like it's more comfortable for – the coaches wise of just being able to not put me well put me in a play that they they are comfortable with and just being able to like okay Mooney can make this play not so of uh it's not so if if like they um we're, we got to see what he can do on this play or hopefully Mooney can put, make this play you know Jimmy Graham was meeting the media and he said that he studied Tony Gonzalez and Antonio Gates a couple of famous tight ends in the NFL does your do you transfer thinking, okay, I, I feel like I play like this guy or I have skills of this person. Are there any guys that maybe you'd watch a little extra tape on and kind of look at your traits similar to them? Uh, I watch a lot of guys. man. I watch I watch A-Rob as well. I mean, obviously, and um, Tyreek Hill, uh, Deshaun Jackson, Jarvis Landry, Adam Thielen. Like, I watch a lot of guys because they do a lot of things different, and I want to put it all into one. So uh, if I can grab all those guys, you know, different things and put it into one one person, I mean, I feel like I'll be a great player. For example, out of those guys, give me some traits that you want to pull from some of these guys. And I'm going to throw one more on there, and ironically, 
a fifth round pick as well. You know where I'm going, right? Mm. Stefan Diggs. Mm. Oh, yeah. You guys are not that dissimilar in size and yeah. weight. And I, I don't know exactly what his speed is off the top of my head, but I think you're probably faster. But, you know, he's, he's your rookie years, yeah. statistically, not that far off either. And then he took a big jump. Yeah. Uh, but if you would pull all those guys and think in your mind's eye, what, what's the trait that you want to inherit from some of these great players? Um, uh, well, speaking on def- uh, Stefan Diggs, um, just him being explosive, like with his routes, and uh, just being able to catch the ball and, and being able to go. As soon as he catches the ball, he's getting rack yards. Hit the gas. Yes. And then, uh, for example, Tyreek Hill, I mean, deep threat for sure. For the sure. cheetah. Yes. If he's the cheetah, what are you? Man, I don't know. <laughs> he's for Yet sure. Yet to be man. determined. Yeah. Adam, the Adam Thielen. Uh, Adam Thielen, uh, his shiftiness and his routes is very, very nasty, very, very savvy, and uh, it's very explosive as well. And I think him and, um, well, watching some old film with him and Stefan Diggs together, I can watch – Diggs one, one at the same time. Yep. I can watch Diggs one route and then run it back and then go to the Allen Thielen. When is the route one? Uh, when is it one? Yeah. Uh, I mean, more so. It depends on the route. It depends on a lot route. The line of scrimmage for sure, and then at the top of the route. So you can have you can be losing mid route, but as long as you give them give them something, give them some swag to it, you'll be able to win it. And I do feel. And I think you'd agree, and we go back to the Rams game against Jalen Ramsey. I know that's always a, a big internet sensation, but you smoked them, but it's the top of the route. Yeah, it's sure. the top of the route. You feel that is your ace in the hole right now. For sure, for sure. I mean, um, I've been working on it with uh, Allen a lot, just making sure I'm, I'm pacing myself, not rushing myself, regardless if I'm if I lose at the beginning. I can always win at the end. So. You know, last year we kind of came became obsessed <clears throat> with you talking about the route tree. And so when you talk about the route tree at this part of your career, early in your career, is it something that you have to discuss that with the quarterbacks? Andy Dalton's a new guy on the scene. Justin's a different quarterback than Andy, and you have experience with Nick. So is it something when you talk about route tree, it's something you have to have a conversation with the quarterback? For sure. Uh, just because some routes I may get out of my break faster than other guys. So um, and I might give a little more at the top of the routes than other guys. Like I want to be as because people people understand that I'm fast and they want to bat- bail out of there. But sometimes they know that I'm I'm going to break by just uh understanding the play and like the alignment of where I am. So I have to tell them like, yo, sit back on your back foot a little bit for me because I might. I might have to give him a little something at the top. So when you talk about the top of the route and you have a quarterback that has the skills of Andy Dalton, then you have a quarterback that has the skills of Justin Fields. Is the top of the route different for a quarterback that runs as well as Justin as opposed to a quarterback that's experienced as Andy Dalton? Um I'm not I'm not sure with the with the understanding of a quarterback throwing wise, I just understand. Uh, well, what? Justin can extend the play a little bit longer because oh, he does okay. have the okay. the traits and the yeah, four yeah. four speed and everything yeah. that's talked about. Yeah, I mean, uh, well, getting out the pocket wise, yes. I mean, I feel like watching watching practice wise in the two minute drill the other day, Justin went absolutely crazy. It was amazing to watch and uh, just watching him move around and uh, get out the po- pocket, extending the plays. It was uh, amazing to watch. And then Andy. As well, um, just the way he was controlling everybody, getting people in the right spots, and putting the ball on you, and uh, letting us all know what's going on. Yeah, because uh, as we talk with Darnell Mooney here on Chicago Sports Radio 670, the score. This is Bears All Access, brought to you by IGS Energy with Tom Thayer, Jeff Joniak, because the ball is going to be there on, on your cut. Uh, but we were talking today, Tom and I, just watch with, from our perspective, because we don't always get to be in the right place to see practice. Just you could feel Matt Matt Nagy always uses you can you feel it right yeah. you can feel the heat coming off his missile I mean <laughs> that arm strength is pretty sharp so do you have to be ready for it in both cases one because it's going to be there on time with Andy yeah. but this other guy it's yeah. also going to be there because he's got some mustard on for sure, it for sure you have to you definitely have to know who's back there for sure uh, and uh, you have to definitely get on the jug machines if you're catching the ball from Justin. Because uh, nobody's throwing the ball that hard unless it's the, a jug machine. And no one knows better than this man right here, Darnell Mooney, because one of his first purchases last year was that very thing, yes, a sir. jug machine. Uh, is it in the house? Where is it at? Is it in your backyard? Are you using it off off practice days? I mean, is this a constant, uh, sure. constant thing for you? And 
Give us the backstory on the jugs machine. Uh, I get it every um, I get it in every day after practice, after uh, meetings, after I leave here at seven thirty. Uh, get it in. I'm shooting it over my house to get some um, over the shoulders. Then I'm shooting my backyard. So. so who's working with you on this? My chef. <laughs> <laughs> chef, the man, hey, it's more. You, the more you can do in this league, sure. right? Even the chef. For sure. So the chef. Is this pre-dinner or post-dinner? This is post. Post-dinner. So he fries you up some, not fry, he <laughs> makes you some nice food, which is right up Tom's alley because right. he's a chef from way back. He enjoys uh, the culinary arts. And then uh, we got some work to do in the backyard. That, sure. That's hilarious. I, are you willing to say who it is? Because we give the guy a shout out because Kirk that's Swabby. the- Who? Chef Kirk, Kirk Swaby. Kirk Swaby. How'd you find him and what's the relationship like? Uh, and has it been the two years now? Uh, yes, uh, relationship is good. He's like, he's not even my chef, honestly. He's like another brother to me. So, um, uh, I actually found him in my apartment complex when uh, just walking around, I was looking for chefs and, uh, he happened to live in the same place as me and we, you know, that's yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. Well, what's his best dish and what do you like him, uh, putting on, putting uh, on the table for you? I think, uh, smoked salmon is the best dish, man. And, uh, asparagus. Have you physically, have you changed anything about yourself since you've had a, you know, you come here from college, you have the food that's offered to you up upstairs, and now you have a guy that supplies food for you. Mm. Have you changed anything about your body since you got into the NFL? Uh, well, when I got in, I was eating way better. I was, uh, in college, it was nothing but chicken wings, you know, <laughs> fried food. And then uh, com uh, training for the combine, I was I was eating very healthy, and then, now, if I eat anything fried, it messes my stomach up bad. So I just eat everything clean and uh, just take care of the body as much as I can. Lean mass. Did you put some on from last season? Did, did you put did. more armor on? Because, man, you, you absorb some some pretty big hits, and you will. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's, that's sure. the by virtue of the position. And Matt wants everybody to play all the spots, so you're going to be taking on various size cornerbacks and safeties and whatnot. So do you feel you put on some armor, and how has it made you feel? And is there a limit on how much you could put on to maintain your your sparkling speed. Uh, I definitely, I definitely put on a few pounds. I, I at, in OTAs the first day I was like 185, and uh, I stepped on the scale and I was like, whoa, it's a little too fast for me <laughs> to gain. But I felt great at it, so um, I'm looking forward to getting back to 185. And uh, right now I'm like 175, 180 uh, around that range. But um, I'm feeling good though. I'm feeling great. More with Darnell Mooney after this break on Chicago Sports Radio 670 The Score. This segment of Bears All Access is brought to you by Athletico Physical Therapy. Visit athletico.com to request an appointment in clinic or virtually and start feeling better tomorrow with Jeff Joniak, Tom Thayer, Darnell Mooney. Tom, you've got the floor. Right. So your junior and senior year in college, you had 48 catches each year, and last year you had 61 catches. Did that seem like a big jump to you, or do you see that's just scratching the surface and you have bigger numbers capable each year you play? Uh, yeah, for sure. Honestly, last year I didn't realize that I had 61 catches. I thought I was lower than that, honestly. So uh, I'm expecting more. I'm I'm able to take on more. Any role that's more I'm willing to take on. So um, hopefully, you know, Coach Nagy can pan some creative plays out for me to get open, and uh, we can see those go Are up. Have you developed a relationship with either receivers coach or Coach Nagy that maybe you have a suggested route or a play from your past that you know that – the success rate is high for you? Uh, I mean, some of the offense that we have ran in uh, college was from the Bears. So I've been running some of the same plays anyway, so I don't really have to say too much. Uh, I'm comfortable with everything that we call. Uh, just That's probably why I got a, a good pickup on the playbook last year. So. Are, you, are you a fan of the game? Or me, I'm kind of obsessed with it after mm -hmm. playing, and even while I was playing. I would watch tape. I would watch the games when they're on TV, yeah. and you kind of – pick up little things are you that type of a fan yeah, for sure for sure like uh i'll be watching with uh the family and they'll be like who you're who you, who you rooting for and i'm like um i'm really just watching and uh, i like to play out uh strategies throughout the game like what do they have to do here do they have to score early here do they have to hold the ball a little bit more i just like to pan out strategies of the game are you playing Madden? Oh, for sure. Yes yeah <laughs> we, you know, we're old so we <laughs> have you ever played a video game in your life <clears throat> i mean Pinball. That, that back in the day, yeah. I mean, I know. But, you know, all, all the kids, uh, my daughters certainly do. But um, so you, it, it's interesting because I've never played it, and I would get my rear end kicked by any young man playing that game. Uh, do you pick up some nuggets that might help you on the field from Madden? For sure. Madden is definitely another practice. And then, like, uh, the, you have to see the coverage 
and uh, knowing where you want to go with the ball. Some of the plays that we run are on Madden. So you can run those plays and just uh, you can see the see the defense that we're going against next week, and I'll probably just get on there and just play Madden against those coverages and see how it will be re- – Pan out and into that, and from a quarterback view. Now, are you as into it as well? When Kyle Long was here, the ex bear, he used to play all these different games with people from all over the world. Do you do that? I do. I okay, Tariq. Yeah. He's yeah, the guy. Tariq. He's yes, the gamer. yes, Tariq. Yeah. So, what is that interaction like with you? Do they know who you are when you do it, or do you go by uh, undercover? How's that all work? Uh, my name is a little different on the video <laughs> games. <laughs> Care to share that one? Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> but you know, when you, when you go and you play a game like Madden, and you can pick up different things if you're watching tape. <clears throat> but then when you have the human side of it out on the field, can you read a defensive back like going, "Okay, I know this guy's not confident in this type yeah. of move or this type of pre-snap movement and stuff." Yeah. You, can you read these guys now? Yeah, for sure, for sure. The leverage tells it all, and then uh, just honestly getting in the film room and understanding what guys like to do and our reading what type of guys, like, um, are not comfortable doing. So if guys are, are not comfortable, like, you know, sitting back so far from, from a blitz and they like to get over it and then it's capped, then um, you can just tell who who's not comfortable with what they're doing. Darnell Mooney, our guest here on Bears All Access on Chicago Sports Radio 670. The score with Tom Thayer, Jeff Joniak. So I'm going to go back to the, the catch number you said were surprising. Would it surprise you to know you had 98 targets? No, I did not. You did not know that. Yeah. So between you and A-Rob, as I just fired up my computer, he's had 150-plus the last two years, and that's right at the top of the shelf in the National Football League for a targeted receiver. So between the two of you, basically 250 targets last year. Uh, and I'm assuming that's going to continue in that vein, although you do have complementary speed with veterans that likely are going to make this roster and be impact players like Marquise Goodwin, uh, Demir Bird and obviously Daz Newsom coming off injury. There's opportunities here. Javon Wims, lots of different opportunities. to. Will, will that benefit you guys if you're not needed to be targeted that often? Spread the wealth a little bit. Will that open up the field for you and A-Rob? For sure, for sure. Marquise is already telling me the other day that I can catch one ball and it's over for, for me for the rest of the season. They're going to respect it for the rest of the season. So just understanding that, uh, just just the room in general, everybody's for each other. So, um I definitely think it will open up for everybody. All right, blocking or jet sweeps. Yeah. What's more, what is the more physical <laughs> element? Because if you don't block, you can't play in the NFL, and you sure. do block. Sure. But you also run a lot of sweeps. So when you look at a, a, getting a ball at the line of scrimmage where you're the ball carrier or downfield where you have to make a block that's instru- instrumental in a success of a play, what, at, what physical part of it do you, do you like the most? Uh I'll take on I'll take on the uh, the blocking. I'll take on the blocking. The dress suits I like because I can run past the you know the big heavier guys. I don't right. have to worry about too too much of them. But uh, I mean if I can you know get a good block in, uh, it'll it'll get me ready for the rest of the game early on. So, all right, we're gonna let you go. Uh, one final question. Um, you know your late father worked at GM. Your mom worked for Goodyear down in Gadsden, Alabama. So are you in the cars? Uh, no. Because of all that, <laughs> no. no. What 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 other hobby ish type things? Uh, I like music and uh, I like rooftops. 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 Hanging out at some rooftops. Yep. Got some favorites in uh, this fair city because there are a lot of them. Uh, the London House is my favorite one. Okay, right now. can't yeah. beat that. Best view in the city, right yeah, down the Chicago sure. River, right? That's sure. that a boy. <laughs> Have you been on a rooftop in this town? Oh yeah. Oh, okay, I don't know. You don't I get out a, much. I was at a game at Wrigley recently. No, where... not that kind of rooftop. <laughs> I'm talking about a you know a, a restaurant tavern, you know. Uh, nah, yeah, I mean, nah, believe it, me, in my social life, I have. But, <laughs> yeah. not, pre- not presently. <laughs> Applied computing, your major at Tulane. I was just with Matt Forte last week, and he brought you up, another yeah. Tulane grad. And uh, Matt, his degree was finance, and he's had a great post career because of it, doing all sorts of things. And uh, no matter what, when uh, your football career ends 10 or 15 years from now, you got other things to fall back on, don't you? And that, that was the value of that education. For sure, for sure. My main goal is uh, be successful 50% each way. I know football is in 50%. I mean, NFL is in 50%. But uh, Tulane has a powerhouse name, so I was hopefully whenever I can get a job somewhere, the resume will say Tulane, and it will be like, okay, we can just go ahead and give him the job. And then if I go to the NFL, it was a, it was a plus. So Absolutely. Well, we wish you nothing but the best this year. Great to finally meet you face-to-face and have a great season. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Darnell Mooney, our guest here on Bears All Access. Coming up, Jimbo Covert, the Bears Hall of Famer, going into the Hall of Fame this weekend. 
Great news and great conversation ahead. This is Bears All Access on Chicago Sports Radio 670 The Score. Welcome back to Bears All Access, brought to you by IGS Energy. Choose clean energy for your home at IGS.com because every good choice adds up to a better world. With Tom Thayer, Jeff Joniak, and pleased to be joined by the Centennial Hall of Fame Class of 2020, the greatest left tackle in Chicago Bears history, Jimbo Covert, finally gets his coronation this weekend in Canton. And uh, just like the IGS Energy read there, uh, every good choice adds up to a better world. You were a great choice for the Hall of Fame and long overdue. And then on top of it, Jimbo, you had to wait it out because of a pandemic. But boy, when you get up on that stage in Canton in front of your peers and fans, uh, it's going to be an emotional moment for you. How, how have you processed that and how you uh, how you feeling about it all? Yeah, it's definitely going to be an emotional moment for you. I, I just think that it's, that it's been a while and, and um, you know, uh, obviously with everything that's gone on in the world and the pandemic and everything, it was the right decision to make to not get all those people together. And now uh, getting all those people together and still having some difficulties is, 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 I think it's a difficult thing right now for everybody, but, you know, I think for people that are vaccinated and people that feel comfortable going there, I think it's going to be one heck of a good time. So it's a little, uh, uh, I think, I think waiting that long just makes it that much sweeter and um, it's going to, you know, really you know looking forward to spending time with all my family and friends and teammates and uh it's gonna be a good time hey jimbo so the other day my friend steve Dahl sends me a picture of his grandson going to his first football practice and he's sitting in the back seat with his helmet on tell me the story about jimbo covert going from that day to going on the stage as a hall of famer well, it's a long story, Tom. It take a long time, but you know, I first started playing football when I was eight, and my uh, my brother was nine, and and my um, and my uh, you know, we had to beg my dad to let him play football and let me play football. My mom didn't want me to play, so my dad was uh, kind of against it because of her, but he really wanted us to play. So uh, we wore my mother down a little bit, but. Uh, you know, I started uh, Conway Raiders, um, uh, midget football, or termites or whatever they call it back then. <laughs> and uh, I played fullback for one day, and then I became a guard after that, and then a tackle, and I never left the position after that. So um, I was destined pretty early to play that uh, left tackle position. I played it ever since, uh, you know, midget football. So it, um, But, you know, all the hard work and all the people that you meet, I think that's the greatest thing about football. Football is is – you know, just creates memories for a lifetime and creates relationships for a lifetime at every level. You know, you'll see a lot of my buddies that are going to be there that I grew up with and went to kindergarten and first grade with and played football, midget football, junior high football. Uh, you'll see all the guys from Pitt and, and the Bears. So it's going to be quite a party and uh, it's going to be great seeing everybody. Jimbo Covert, our guest here on Bears All Access on Chicago Sports Radio 670. The score top there, Jeff Joniak. I wrote this last year. I went back in my files and I said, uh, Jimbo grew up in a Pittsburgh area steel town built tough. And that's exactly how you played the game. It's, it's your roots that kind of built your foundation and your mentality and your desire. And Tom's told me many, many, many stories about uh, a guy you don't mess with on a very tough team in the 80s was Jimbo Covert. Well, yeah, I don't know. I, I just think, thanks, Jeff. I, I just think that, um, you know, and Tom and I had a lot of conversations with this, you know, when I first got to the Bears, you know, um, let me back up. When I was a pit, you know, the, the offensive line were the guys who kind of set practice tempo and, you know, set, set kind of the speed of practice. And, you know, I'm sure it was the same way at Notre Dame. When I got to the Bears, it was completely the opposite. You know, it was a defensive line that set practice tempo and set – that kind of game, you know, speed of practice. And, um, you know, I just wasn't really comfortable with that because I thought they kind of, you know, were guys that, uh, you know, had an advantage and they took advantage of it and, you know, pushed some people around. And, you know, I wasn't used to that. So, you know, I wanted to make sure when I get in there that I you know, stood up for myself and showed people I wasn't going to be pushed with or messed around. And, um, you know, I think that just creates people that respect that, you know, out of you. If, they, if you didn't do that, they wouldn't respect you at all. So, you know, that's just football. That's just being on the field and earning respect and, you know, having guys that, that you play with respect you. And that's a big deal. 
Jim Malaya, you know, the common ground between you and Mike Ditka, he went to Pitt, you went to Pitt. He's from the Pittsburgh area, you're from the Pittsburgh area. So that the initial relationship between you two as coach and player, how, how did that start? How was that relationship develop and, and how did it kind of mold your attitude in your career? Uh, that's great, Tom. When I first got there, you know, in mini camp, my rookie year, I was named a starter before I even walked on the field, you know, and, and, and I went in there, didn't know the plays, didn't know the system. And, um, you know, it took me a while to kind of get up to speed. I think, um, there was a lot of expectation that I would play at a, at a, at a, you know, a high level winning football level. And right out of the gate, when you're not used to the system, you know, there was a couple of times where I wasn't, uh, you know, I, I don't think I played as well as I should have. And he let me know about it, especially down in Baltimore when, uh, when he, uh, when he broke his hand on that locker and that was probably <laughs> my fault. Um, cause I, it's the first game I ever got pulled out of, uh, cause I missed about three assignments and, um, he let me know that he challenged me the next week and said, you need to play at an all pro level. I don't care how old you are. And that's my expectation. And then the next week against Denver, we played really good game and I got a game ball. So I think that's when it kind of started that I had to challenge myself as well. And I just couldn't say, Hey, I'm a rookie. And you know, you know, if I make a few mistakes, that's okay. I wasn't allowed to make any mistakes. And so um, I did put the pressure on myself and it all worked out, but that relationship started, I think basically saying, I'm going to challenge you to, to, to be the best player you can be. And I'm not going to expect anything less than perfection. And that's what he wanted. For those Bears fans out there that enjoyed watching Jimbo Covert and those that never got the opportunity, I, I always find it fascinating to go back and just read. And this is why guys get in the Hall of Fame, what they did in the terms of dominance or change the game in their era. And it's really when you see it in print, it, it's a mind blow because this is Dan Pompey's research, and uh, Dan, the great Hall of Fame writer, uh, helped you get in there, obviously. He, he's standing on the table for you. 17 games in your career against current Hall of Fame pass rushers. Four and a half sacks allowed. I wonder if you remember all those four and a half sacks allowed because Tom remembers every one he may have given up or every offside penalty he had. And, and then the other angle of it, first four years in the league, Bears led the league in rushing with Jimbo Covert leading the way, and seven 1,000-yard rushers. Yeah, everybody knows Walter Payton, but also Neil Anderson three times. So this was bigger than just the guys in the backfield toting the rock. It was what you did, all that, all you guys on the offensive line, but in your era. So those are some significant reasons uh, to put a man in the NFL Hall of Fame for sure. Yeah, I think what I'm most proud of, Jeff is just, you know, our offensive line and, and, you know, how we came together. And, you know, I can't think of four better guys that I would rather line up next to on any Sunday. I mean, we were very fortunate to play together for a long time and that's a, uh, that's a big deal. And I think that's a big deal for offensive line linemen to be comfortable with each other. So, you know, we were, and, um, you know, what I'm most proud about is, is that, you know, setting a record like that, you know, really kind of went unnoticed for a long time. And it was really unfortunate because um, if you can lead the league in rushing four years in a row, I mean, it only happened one other time. And I think that was in the forties from the bears in the forties. And so, um, and you think about guys, you know, teams that have hall of fame, offensive linemen, right. Um, that have several hall of fame, offensive linemen um, that uh, in that era, their teams never led the league in rushing. And so when you think about that, you know, how does that go unnoticed all those years? And I think it was basically because you had, we had such a great defense. And, uh, and I think a lot of that was kind of attributed to Walter Payton and, and rightly so, but, but you have to have an offensive line that's out there blocking for him. Right. And uh, I think finally to get that recognition, finally, after all these years, it was kind of surprising to me that it didn't get recognized earlier on. Jambalaya, you know, your college roommate, Dan Marino, says you're the best left tackle he's ever played with. And for, a former Hall of, or Hall of Famer, Richard Dent, says you're the best left tackle he's ever played against. That's mm -hmm. pretty high praise for, for you and for the compliments of two Hall of Famers. What's that mean to you that after all these years that your, your name is still at the forefront of both of these guys' career? 
Well, Danny, you know, I just, um, we played together for three years and I protect his blind side. And, uh, you know, he always says that, uh, that, uh, he made me a better left tackle because he got rid of the ball <laughs> fast. <laughs> so, uh, that's his thing. He'll say that to me. He won't say that. To us, but, um, and Richard, I mean, you know, we came in together and we practiced against each other every day and, you know, maybe we weren't, uh, sometimes, uh, very fond of each other and, uh, but, because of practicing like that and uh but uh we were always friends and uh he means a lot to me and and you know he made me better I mean you played against him Tom I mean he had one of the best first steps of any player I've ever played against and if you didn't have a good pass set coming off the ball you were dead already I mean he was already past you so um and and playing against our offensive line I mean we weren't I mean our defensive line we were never going to play against anybody on Sunday that was any better I mean you had Steve McMichael, who I think should be in the Hall of Fame, Dan Hampton is a Hall of Famer, Richard Dent, you know, the Fridge, you know, Mike Hardenstein. I mean, these guys were players now. I mean, they they were some of the greatest players of all time. So, you know, who are we going to play on Sunday in a scheme that was going to be better than those guys? So our practices were more intense than the games. Here on Bears All Access on Chicago Sports Radio 670, the score. Our special guest, Hall of Famer Jimbo Covert, the Bears' left tackle with Tom Thayer, Jeff Joniak. So NFL lineman of the year in 85, 110 games in a career, slugging it out in the trenches, four all-pro seasons, and uh, one of the uh, premier players in Bears history, regardless of position. Uh, a lot of accolades. So when you had to put pen to paper, and now I don't know how many times you may have re rewritten it or have you written it. Are you going to speak off the cuff? What's your plan for Canton this weekend on your acceptance speech? Uh, there will be no speaking off the cuff because they've, <laughs> they've, the, they've, the, they've got the chain on us out there. Oh, so, yeah, that's right. How many, they're, minutes, they're, how, many minutes, how many minutes they've given you now? Eight? Six, six minutes. Six. Now, how so, can you capture six. your life in six minutes? Well, they made sure of that. So I uh, had to submit it, <laughs> and I, then they wanted you to work with a uh, speech uh, coach who was great and wow. kind of move some things around. And then, um, you know, I timed it and I said it was under six minutes and she timed it and said it was over eight minutes. So um, then I added some things. She had, took some things out. So then she had me read it in front of her on Zoom and timed it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so it's hard to capture your whole life in six minutes, you know, and so um, that was hard to do. But I, mean, I just didn't want it to be you know, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for six minutes. I, I tried to weave some things in there that I think were important of people that had a huge impact in my life. And, and uh, so I'm hoping with six minutes, it, it, it does it justice. Well, and uh, that's all we can hope for. One more thing about that, though. Do they factor in the tears? Because I don't know how an emotional man you are, but we've seen I've, I've been to <laughs> many and the tears start flowing. And, you, you, you know, that, that's going to eat up some of your six minutes. Well, I hope they stop the clock with that. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if they will, but the rumors are, since I haven't seen you, have, no one's ever seen this before. Six minutes, you get a light, like a light. Uh, seven minutes, you get like a red light. And then eight minutes, they're going to play music like it's the Oscars. They're going to give you the hook and take you off the stage. So um, I think God, no one wants to be the first guy to experience <laughs> that, you know? Um so I'll, I'll get through it uh, rather quickly. So we'll we'll see. All right, last thing with Jimbo Covert, Bears Hall of Fame left tackle, uh, gets his induction uh, speech in place and his bust in, in Canton, and it's just uh, an amazing accomplishment for any uh, pro athlete to get to the Hall of Fame and be considered one of the best of all time in this great game. So Matt Suey, your presenter, I know there have been some stories written about that, but uh, explain – that choice uh, before we let you go and uh, enjoy your trip down to Ken. Well, <clears throat> Matt and I were roommates. Um, Willie Galt and I were roommates for the first year. And, you know, um, but, you know, Willie, Willie liked to have people come up to the room, you know, like we go out and play LA and the, you know, a couple of the Jackson five would be up in our room and, uh, <laughs> and we go to another place and he'd have other celebrities up there. I said, Willie, I love you, my man, but I, I can't, I can't take it anymore. I got to get in. <laughs> so, so I went to Matt and, uh, cause I think he had Roland Harper and then Roland retired and, uh, and then, uh, and then I got Matt. So Matt and I were roommates for seven years and he was such a great mentor. 
and it was funny because we used to laugh. It was a Pitt and Penn State guy in, in the same room together, you know. Um, but we got along, and I really had a tremendous amount of respect for him, and he became a mentor of mine, and he really gave me a lot of advice later on in my career about what I was supposed to do, kind of do after football, and what his thoughts were, and really meant a lot to me. So, um, And I think it was a way of also remembering Walter because they were so close and having Walter be part of this thing as well, because we all miss him and he meant so much to all of us. So uh, he'll be there as well in spirit. And, and that's what I kind of wanted. Well, Jimbo, uh, we really appreciate you taking the time and a busy week for you. Uh, congratulations again. Enjoy the entire process. This once in a lifetime moment with you, your friends, your family and teammates. And uh, couldn't think of a, a better man to be representing the Chicago bears in the national football league and the pro football hall of fame uh, numbers 29 and 30 Ed Sprinkle a 40s and 50s era Bear defensive lineman also inducted this weekend as well. Jimbo, congrats, buddy. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Tommy. Thank you, Jimbo. Take care. Yep, see you. See you, see you buddy. More of Bears All Access coming up after this break on Chicago Sports Radio 670 The Score. This segment of Bears All Access is brought to you by CDW. People to get it. Jeff and Tom wrapping up today's show. Been a good one with Darnell Mooney and Jimbo Covert. Lots of great conversation. Lots of great storytelling as well. All right, I'm going to hit you with a bunch of stuff here, Tommy. Let's talk Cole Komet. Boss coming at him quick from Andy Dalton. Uh, it's coming there fast from Justin Fields because he's got heat on his missile for sure. Uh, when he adjusts, what are some of the things he has to take into account as he tries to catch that football? Because it's coming at him in very different ways, and it, and it is going to be coming to him a lot here in 2021. I think with Cole Komet, the thinking process as soon as you break the huddle, you listen to the terminology in the huddle and you see, am I the first, second, or third read on this route? If I'm the first read on this route and I win my battle at the line of scrimmage, then i got to look for that football to be there by the time I'm out of my break. It's not a chance where you get to recognize eye contact and then throw the ball. It's it's about having a sped up process. And again, another thing Matt's talked about with Andy Dalton is the ability to anticipate the throw. Justin Fields, he's got the arm strength to contribute. And he also adjusts those speeds. He can feather it in or he can rip it over the middle in tight coverage. Some big plays made today in the back of the end zone. A lot of red zone uh, work here today. Uh, I'm impressed with the the type of speed on his fastball. And, you know, sometimes you're going to need it, but sometimes you got to take something off on that fastball and throw a changeup. Yeah, but you know, the way Justin runs, he's got a lot of different arm angles according to the type of pressure he's facing. It's not always just going to be an overhand throw. There's a lot of times that he's going to have to adjust to either a defender near him or the conclusion of the route. All right, Tommy, uh, if you had to summarize so far, what has been the most enlightening development of camp for you and maybe what has been the most disappointing? Well, the most enlightening thing is I'm really impressed in the effort that the defenders are giving new defensive coordinator Sean Desai. These guys are playing enthusiastically, and they're playing fast. And I think it means a lot to the overall scheme because you have the continuous development of guys like Blau Nichols and Akeem Hicks and you know the outside rushers that we know about. But it's the overall team enthusiasm on the defensive side of the ball in relation to Sean Desai. And maybe a little disappointing? I'm disappointed in some of the marquee names not being out there. And I'll, you know, Eddie Jackson and, you know, Tevin for that part. Robert Quinn missed a practice. So I, and I know it's far away from the first game and the Dolphins are getting ready to come in here, but it is about these guys being healthy and being on the field because that's when you're really going to be able to put all of your scheme in motion. All right. Have you learned anything about Andy Dalton and Justin Fields? that you didn't know before, didn't anticipate before. Experience makes you a smarter quarterback, and I think that's what you see out of Andy Dalton. When you see a formation that he knows that someone's in the wrong position, he can make the adjustment immediately. He can make the alternative play decision at the line of scrimmage to keep the offense in the, in the right play. And he's got really confident arm strength, and he knows how to – he's getting to know his assets better in, in terms of their development – but, Justin, you know, it's it's all about confidence in his ability. If he feels that there's a free rusher, he knows that he's a better athlete to make a miss in space and either convert it into a solid run by a quarterback or taking advantage of a receiver that's just coming open later in the route. All right, here come the Miami Dolphins next week. Uh, a couple of practices, then a walkthrough day, and then they play at Soldier Field on Saturday at noon on the 14th. I think there's a lot of excitement about it. Uh, how do you feel about 
uh, what you can see in terms of the work that you're going to get and the evaluation you're going to get going up against Miami? Well, in as when I went through training camp and we brought in a different opponents, it was all about making sure that you trust what you've been coached up until this point because you're not going to have a lot of tape of you evaluation before you get into your first one-on-ones or nine-on-seven or seven-on-seven. So it's about listen to the coaches, listen to the the critique and the fundamental criticisms and improvements that you've been able to make and use those tools that they've given you thus far. All right, Tom, we're out of time, man. We're going to talk to you next week, and we'll be talking about those Miami Dolphins and getting ready for the first preseason game. One of three on the schedule. Exciting times for everybody involved. Exciting times for Bears fans as well as they get to see it all unfold. With Tom Thayer, I'm Jeff Joniak. Thanks again to our guest today, wide receiver Darnell Mooney and the Hall of Famer, left tackle Jimbo Cover from that great Bears offensive line from the 80s into the 90s. We'll talk to you next week. Thanks again to our producers, Jordan Treadup, Dan Barilli, and the folks at The Score. This has been Bears All Access, brought to you by IGS Energy on Chicago Sports Radio 670 The Score. Thanks for listening to this Chicago Bears Network presentation of Bears All Access. Podcasts are available on chicagobears.com and on iTunes or download the official Bears mobile app. Bears All Access has been brought to you by IGS Energy and sponsored by Miller Lite.